the good mothers guided you to victory. Milf, the the good mother. It was we, I think it was Just watch it. Just... Fresh eggs! Fresh eggs for sale! <clears throat> Sausage! Cheese! Milk! Exotic silks! Berries and grains expel without a strain! As ever, the market in Harmelin bustled with life. Though that particular day, Meave was earnestly surprised at the sight. For just months before, Nilfgaard had leveled the city. Harmelin's rebirth was now well underway. Folk hammered and soared, and the scent of fresh mortar filled the air as the city rose from its ashes. In spite of the chaos, the mayor recognized the queen. He rushed over to greet his illustrious guest. All this must cost a veritable fortune. Where did you get the coin, good man? It's a loan. Altogether unbelievable. A vast sum at a very low rate. To be repaid a century down the line. <laughs> my, my. A banker with deep pockets and a generous spirit. Droll, I'd say, if I wasn't eager to meet him. Nothing simpler, Your Grace. He lives in a house on the market square. Intrigued, the Queen asked to meet the mysterious financier. And who should come out to greet her, if not Mirko Vidmar? When last they'd met, Meave had helped the dwarf to raise the funds for his enterprise. I cannot believe my eyes. My royal benefactor. Oh, didn't I just stand there? Come in, come in! The bank was a frantic flurry of activity. Papers rustled, coins clinked, and stamps slammed the countertops. You gave the city a loan, I heard. Preferential, to say the least. An entire century to repay it. What's the rush? Fact is, I enjoy seeing them work. The progress they make, it's mental. Every last one of them builds what he wants. In Mahakam, we'd spend a year debating whether to pound a nail nine times or ten. <laughs> the Queen and Mirko shared a sumptuous dinner. They toasted his success, Five and she set off leads. once more. <coughs> Following morn, the quartermaster approached. A vexed grin on his face, he reported the news. Soldiers had found a chest in one of the wagons. 
When opened, it proved to be brimming with gold. None could say for certain whence it had come, but Meave had her suspicions. doing their part to rebuild the homeland. Master Merc, dwarves are dwarf. It'd be an honor to fight at your side, Majesty. Side by side. Long! It'd be an honor to fight at your side, Majesty. As on that day, Aldersburg was under siege. Yet this time, Eden's flags fluttered in the field, while Nilfgaard's tattered sons crowned the fort's towers. The Queen found Demoven's tent without difficulty. Made of sheets of silk edged with silver thread, it positively shone. Seems the realm's restored to a virtuous path, muttered Meave. Aha! There she is! Queen Meave! Savior of the North, the Sun Slayer. Mockery I don't appreciate. I wouldn't dare. Not my words, those. You've been painted thus in song. Master Dandelion himself wrote a ballad, The Battle for the Bridge. If you take the bard at his word, you're as fierce with a blade as any witcher. Hmm. Is that jealousy I hear? To be perfectly honest, Meave, it is. For I hadn't the pluck, nor resolve. And when all the North tuck tail went to sight, you alone stepped up and bared your fangs. Let it be a lesson for the future to us all. You called out the future. Tell me, how's your son? Baldwin. Ah, oh, growing like a weed he is. And the spitting image of his old man. Good news all, especially given the mother's profession. She's now Countess de Maretta of Gullet, a lady of the court. Ooh, your lawful wife must be thrilled. Hard to say in truth. I've not seen her in some time. Duty keeps me away, you understand. Hmm. You work hard, I'm certain. Many a night, too. <laughs> you might say so indeed. But enough about me. As we're chirping away like two gossips in the field, do tell me. What a villain. He's here with me. Ah. In chains, perhaps? No. In coronet and robes. We came to an understanding. What's past is past. A lesson for the future? What do you mean? My dear, this war won't change a bloody thing, you know. Nilfgaard will be Nilfgaard, the North, the North. We'll sign a truce. The black clads will turn tail towards home. But the old borders don't satisfy us. I'm perfectly satisfied with them, thank you. And I just wish other folk would respect them too. Oh, You're one hell of a warrior. But you're no strategist at all. Your perspective, you've got to broaden it. Nilfgaard, we cannot allow it to regain strength and spirit. Else we'll face another invasion within a decade or two. Measures are required. Preventive, preemptive, whatever the learned call it. Build an army, a vast one. Wait in ambush. And when they least expect it, break their bloody spine. 
Just think, if we were to join forces... Enough. I don't wish to hear it. Won't even entertain the thought. I'll help you take Aldersburg, but then I'll go home, where, God's willing, I'll live to a ripe old age. As you wish. We can mount the assault at any time, but... But? My scouts report a small Nilfgaardian force approaching from the south. They've stayed off the roads, moved only under the cover of night, escorting someone. Who? I've no notion. Could be a mage. <clears throat> Devilishly unpredictable, that lot. Could wreak havoc in our ranks. Either way, before we rush at the walls, we must make certain they don't reach Aldersburg at all. I shall see to it. Are you sure? You've just arrived. Must be weary after the long journey. An understatement if I ever heard one. But I wish all this to be over, quickly. Neve set out after the Nilfgaardians immediately, a cavalry escort in tow. Her unmatched scouts, who had led the army through the mountains of Mahakam and Angren swamps, quickly found the enemy's trail. This way, Your Grace! It's not far now! That very same day, Meave's force caught up to the mysterious black-clad unit. Lyrian riders surrounded the foe, forcing the Nilfgaardians to halt. All fell so quiet, the creaking of taut Lyrian bowstrings could be discerned. The common tongue. Which of you knows it? I do, Your Majesty. You also know who you deal with, I see. What is your name? Coldvin, Your Majesty. At last. An Ilfgaardian name I can pronounce. So, Caldwin, it seems this war will reach its end in two days' time at the most. It would be silly to die today, wouldn't you agree? It would, my lady. Precisely. I've spilled enough blood. I've lost the appetite for more. So, provided you don't give me a good reason to kill you, you'll walk away with your lives. Now tell me. You carry something for General Epdahi. What is it? A letter. Urgent to the point of insanity, it must be. Who wrote it? The dear Madam Epdahi? No, Your Majesty. The Emperor. My, my. A letter from Amir himself. You must be an important person. A noble, or... Huh. Yet your uniform is simple, with no discernible distinctions. Who are you truly, Coldwin? A spy? A simple messenger, Your Majesty. Don't lie. I know messengers, how they travel. Alone, armorless, atop a swift steed. You're escorted by cavalry of the heavy sort. For I often carry orders the recipients don't wish to perform, thus the <clears throat> escort. Give me the letter. I've sworn to deliver it to General Epdahi, or to die in the quest to do so. Oh, very well. My translator shall read this letter, then return it to you. You shall break no vow, and who knows? You might even survive. And if I refuse? Guess. So be it. I accept your offer. Meave's translator cracked the seal and read. And as he read, his eyes grew wide as saucers. Then he whispered in the Queen's ear. Truly. And you're certain you're not mistaken. The wonders of this world. Coldwin, consider this your lucky day. I allow you to complete your mission with one proviso. And that is? That when you hand him the letter, you will give the General my regards. As Caldwin and Escort set off towards Aldersburg, the Lyrian soldiers looked at their Queen with disbelief. To leave a Nilfgaardian to fulfill a secretive task. Neve failed to stifle a rather mean laugh. They'll understand tomorrow, she thought. General Epdahi had prefaced Lyria's and Rivia's invasion with a series of arrogant demands. The Nilfgaardian had been impudent, as he had felt sure he'd achieve a quick and decisive victory. Yet several months on, he too received an ultimatum. One signed by Emperor Emir Var Emres himself. The missive was concise and left no room for interpretation. With General Epdahi dead, the Nilfgaardian army descended into chaos. The kings of the north, united, took advantage and struck at the foe. Their victory was complete. The Nordling forces cheered their commanders and monarchs, but for none so vehemently as the one queen among them. 
Many dream of achieving the impossible. Meave had done it. Through wit, determination, and boldness, she had thwarted the Nilfgaardian invasion. The queen would rule for many more years. Stern, yet ever just. Ah! So alas saved the north from the black clans. That is one way to put it. Well, I'll be damned. And a chap. She find herself what in the end? Leave it be. Bloke's been spinning the tail all night. Story's done. Time we got some shut eye. Yes. Particularly as we've yet a long road before us. Phew. Throat must be parched as old leather after all that. <laughs> Except, uh, I'm itching to know what happened to the lot of them. Rainard, Gascon. Ah. Oh, very well. Whom shall we start with? Willem? He worked hard to regain his mother's trust and respect. Took on many daring missions, regardless of the risks. The lad who Nilfgaard had wielded as a tool now sowed terror along its borders, and appeared a successor most worthy of Meave. Gascon was buried with honors of the most refined yet mournful sort. His peer lords themselves bore the casket. Soldiers in parade dress beat the funeral drums, and a new stone figure appeared beside the Brossard family vault, the very pointer from their crest, a ducal crown upon its head. Though Nilfgaard owed its defeat chiefly to Meave, in the Empire her name was uttered with utmost respect. Returning soldiers spoke in awed tones of her courage and generosity, referring to her as Gvedin, the tenacious one. With the advent of peace, tensions waned. Lyria's and Rivia's disparate races seemed to live harmoniously, side by side. The Queen pressed for new laws aimed at curbing oppression. They were a step towards more enlightened rule, yet sadly were habitually broken. And Meave? As I said, she ruled with an iron hand, not fist, and with her son's unwavering support. She could now trust him again. A great victory, greater even than Rivia's liberation. And now... If you'd allow me. Of course. Leave him be, lads. Let him get some rest. Till the time comes for the next tale. Hmm.
Noctis Meave, slayer of our Blacklands, long live... The Lizard. Sadly. Sadly. I survive. Rebuild your... Arnulf. What about after? What do I tell... I yearned... So long. Uh... Yes, Your Grace? The war nears its end. Whatever you come up... Ugh. Is something... Am To be perfectly blunt, I've no wish to give you orders anymore. Your Grace, would you wish me to leave? Remove me from the court? No, Reynard. I'd wish you to stay. But I'd no longer wish to be your queen alone. Do you catch my meaning? I do, Meave. I do. It's time I attended. I'm pleased to see you. The war's near its end. The future, what does it hope? Mm. A tempting offer, ma'am. So be it. I shall stay. <laughs> Duty calls, of course. Yes, mother. We shall speak. Oh, that was cool. 